Hello everyone and welcome to the Chicago White Sox rebuild on MLB 24. Now this is going to be a new thing for me. I've never done an MLB series before so there will be changes throughout. Like I'm going to test the waters to see what exactly is best to show in the viewership but I'm going to be taking over the Chicago White Sox, the worst team in MLB 24. I'd like to, I'd like to point that out. Ranked 30th bottom and basically everything this team is not good they do have some bright pieces which i will go over the team here very shortly but like i said this is going to be a new thing for me we're going to see how this series is going to go i'm really excited for it i hope that this turns out really well and let's jump right in to the chicago white Sox series here so i'm going to leave all this stuff on we're playing normal baseball rules i am going to be the manager of everything we'll set up all this stuff here later because I am going to play the games myself. And my whole thought process is, is I'm just going to show you guys the... And basically when I'm, I'm, when I'm editing, I'm just going to show like the important things that happen. We'll see. Like I said, this is a running theory. So we'll see what's going to happen here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sim to the last day of spring training. I'm not trying to do all these spring training games. Uh... And here we are at the last day of spring training, and now we can go over the roster here. So pitching-wise, it's not looking good for the Chicago White Sox. Garrett Crochet will be our starter, and I'm actually really looking forward to using Garrett Crochet. 24, 81 overall with B potential. I think Garrett Crochet could be a starter for us and hopefully can develop to a number one. But after him, it doesn't look good. Jake Woodford and Brad Keller are just going to be plug-and-play guys for the beginning of the season. We're going to have to stick with them. Mike Sorka, I'm hoping we can develop here with the White Sox, has potential 26B potential, so I'm hoping we can develop him. Every other guy behind him isn't that good. However, there are some young prospects here. Drew Thorpe is... 23 with a potential and he could actually really be something for us same with wario irite he could also be something for us as well both these guys are developmental pieces they'll probably be in the farm to start out for the team noah schultz here is also young with potential same as grant taylor so there are some young pitchers that could develop for the white Sox, but right now they aren't good enough to start in the mlb relief pitchers is probably the worst part about this team this relief pitching is absolutely horrendous jesse chavez is their best release pitcher and he is 40 then they also have joe barlow who is is pretty decent I, i'm gonna be happy with joe barlow he'll definitely be our ace in the hole but besides that absolutely ass michael uh michael koptep I, I forget how you pronounce his name but he will also be a good starting uh, relief pitcher for us but not much relief potential here at all. I'm really going to have to go over this roster and make it how I see fit. Closing pitchers, they have John Reba. I mean, he's an okay closing pitcher. We'll deal with him. Catcher, I'm also not happy with at all. They do have Ed, uh, Edgar Caro Hero at 21-63 B potential. I should also say I'm not a White Sox fan. I know some White Sox players, but like... These players that they have in the minors, I don't know. Like, they're starters, I know. But a guy like Edgar here, I think they acquired him in a trade last season. I don't really know him that well. First baseman, Andrew Vaughn, is going to be... Now we're starting to actually get into the goods parts here. Relief pitching, closing pitching, catchers, that was brutal. Starting pitching is also kind of brutal. But now we actually get into the position players, which is a lot better. Andrew Vaughn will be a key piece to this White Sox offense. 26A potential. I believe that we can develop him really well. Second base is an issue as well. They do have Jacob Gonzalez here, but I just don't think I can justify him starting. Look at his con. Only 48, 42, 46, and 40 hitting. He's not a good hitter. I just don't think we can start him. Over at third base, they do have Juan Mokata. I will be starting him at third base. Shortstop, though, they do have Colson Montgomery, who is definitely their best young player. He is someone that probably will actually start for this team. I'll fill out the roster and we'll see. But I'm really happy here with Colson Montgomery. He is going to be the young piece that we really need to get starting here for the Chicago White Sox. Then at left field, they have Andrew Bettatendi. He's a good hitter. That's about all I can really say about him. 
Then the best player on the Chicago White Sox, the ace of this team, Luis Robert Jr., 26, 89 development, A potential. Luis Robert Jr. is an absolute stud for the Chicago White Sox. He will be a very important piece for us. They also do have Samuel Savala, really good speed, but he's just going to guy that's going to be sitting in the farm for us. And then we have Dominic Fletcher at right tackle, decent right tackle, too, and Gavin Sheets, who's also a decent right tackle. So now what I'm going to quickly do is, now that I've gone over the team here, I'm going to set the team up right before the regular season here, and I'm going to make all the guys who like I want to be on the 40-man roster and the 40-man roster, and then I will show you the team for the very first game for Chicago White Sox franchise. Okay, so I'm trying to edit the roster here, and Eric Freddy is really screwing me over because I can't move him down to AAA, and I'm forced to start him. So I'm just going to trade a couple of these like and Chris Falcon too. So I'm just going to trade these guys for like a relief pitcher. This might not be the most realistic Chicago White Sox rebuild. I'm going to try to make it pretty realistic, like but it's my franchise, though. And if I'm going to be really rebuilding the White Sox, I need to have fun with it. I'm not going to be starting a 31 year old E potential 68 overall fucker. I'm just not. And same with uh, Eric Freddy here also screwing me up with his salary. I'm just, I'm trading these guys. Look at how much they cost. I'm dumping their salary and I'm just going to be getting a relief pitcher here. Okay. So I'm going to be trading away Ch Chad Curl, Eric Freddy, and Dominic Leon for basically who I'm getting is I'm getting this 26 year old B 65 overall starting pitcher to replace the starting pitchers that we have leaving. And I'm also getting Mason Miller, 25 B potential, 20, 67 overall relief pitcher. So I'm dumping contracts and I'm getting a young relief pitcher and a young starting pitcher to help us out. Okay, the White Sox are just so fucked and just have so many players that I have to keep on the team that are ass. I didn't realize this, so I'm just having to trade away a bunch of guys because I can't... It's either they start on my MLB roster, or if I try to send them down to the AAAs, I'm going to have to pass them through waivers, and they're forced to be on my roster for the start of the season. And I'm just not having that shit. So all these relief pitchers would have to start for me as relief pitchers, and I just don't want that to happen. So I'm just going to trade away these three ass relief pitchers for one decent quality relief pitcher here. Perfect. And I'm going to get uh, Penises Cabrera from the Blue Jays. He was a uh, St. Louis Cardinal for a while, my favorite team. So we now have upgraded. We, we've now gotten rid of all these bullshit relief pitchers that had to start on the team. And we got Penises Cabrera. So I have now set the entire White Sox team. It's bad. It's really, really bad. The White Sox are the worst team in baseball. So I've had to put together a bad squad here. At catcher, I'm not too happy with it. So we have Max Stasi and Corey Lee. I, I'm having Corey Lee be catcher too. His hitting stats are absolutely ass, but at least he's a good fielder with speed. So he should be the backup center just to have someone that can run the bases because he's the only guy with any speed here for the White Sox. Max Stasi is starting. First base, I'm happy with Andrew Vaughn. That's something I can actually say. Second base is horrendous. Sec second base is absolutely horrendous. Why is X? Oh, Jacob Gonzalez here. We're going to actually move him up to AAA. Second base here, we have Nicky Lopez. I'm not happy with it at all, at, at all, as you can see by his power. At least he can get contact. There is Jacob Gonzalez here. He's just, I don't think he's ready. I also don't want to start him because as in a second here with shortstop, you'll see I already have one really young guy with Colson Montgomery that I kind of want to focus. I don't want two young, inexperienced guys to start right away that I'm going to have to focus on. You know, I, I want, I, I just, I just want him to sit there, Jacob Gonzalez. I don't want to rush him too early. At third base, Mike Mostakis. I don't like that he has to be here, 35, 67 overall, but we need his bat, or we need his right power bat, honestly. Then we have Yon Mokado playing third base. I I'm okay with it. He's meh. But then at shortstop, we do have Paul DeYoung, and we have Colson Montgomery, 2271A potential. He's someone I am really looking forward to develop. I'm glad he can make the starting roster. Him and... Him and Paul DeYoung will, will 
split a lot. Obviously, Paul DeYoung has more power, but Colson's a better contact guy. So we'll see how that ends up going. At left field, we have Ale Jimenez and Andrew Benatendi. Benatendi will... Well, actually, Ole might actually end up being our designated hitter because Andrew Benatendi actually has better stats out there at left field. At center field, we only have Luis Robert Jr. Very happy to have him. He's the best player at this team. We have, I guess, a couple of guys down here that can work in development here. Willie will quickly move this guy to double A, move this guy just to normal A. And then at right field, we have Dominic Fletcher and Gavin Sheets, two guys that I'm okay with. Dominic Fletcher is at least a really good outfielder, so that'll be nice. And then Gavin Sheets, we'll try to get him some at-bats when we can. I might just move his ass down to AAA. He's out of options. Never mind. I I'm trading Chris Flex. Uh, I'm trading Chris for literally fucking pennies. He's getting traded for pennies right now. Just give me, like, anything. Give me, like, a decent second base prospect. Oh, God. Oh, God. I don't think I'll be able to trade his ass for anything. Oh, my God. No one wants it, especially because I made him a relief pitcher because I'm a fucking idiot. What can I even get him for? Oh, my God. Even the worst players, I can't. I can't get him for anything. I'll have to get like another relief pitcher. That's just bad. Yeah, I, I, I just, I'm dumping his contract is basically what I'm doing. So uh, I'm trading him for fucking nothing. Let's see, I think I need to get a relief pitcher and free agency here. We just need another one. Rich Hill looks like the guy. Yeah, you see 25. All right, Rich Hill. Perfect. So. I didn't know that Mason Miller actually could be a starting pitcher. I moved him to starting pitcher, and he bumped up to a 76 overall. So Mason Miller actually 25, 76 overall B potential. He could be something for us here too. And the starting rotation now, the biggest issue that I can see is that this is what the starting rotation is going to be, is that we only have one left-handed pitcher and then a bunch of righties. So we'll have to make that work. Or here's here's our bullpen. We're going to have Tanner Banks. We're going to have Rich Hill. We're going to have Michael Kopech, Genesis Cabrera, Steven Wilson. So we got some guys here. Jesse Chavez is obviously 40, but he's going to be our closer. John Barlow, I think someone that could be good for us long term. He is 28. All these other guys here. Genesis Cabrera, maybe, who's 27. Same with Michael here. A potential, he's also 27. Rick Hill, we just picked up. We just needed another left-handed pitcher and Tanner Banks. The relief pitchers aren't that good, but we'll make do with it. We'll make do with it. It's better than where we're at. Our starting rotation also, not the best in the world, but maybe Mike Storko, we could get something out of him. Brad Keller, Jake Warford are kind of just there, but Garrett Cochet, Mason Miller, maybe Mike Sorka, we could have something here. And that's the team. Last thing I'm going to go over with you guys is going to be our lineup, and I'm going to set that real fast for you. Oh, also, I was looking at the coaching staff here. Pedro Grafal, F, uh, he's getting fired. Yeah, I have to pay him $2 million. I don't care. I'm replacing our head coach and actually getting a decent head coach here. And... It might be Ray Cordo. I think I'm going to do Ray Cordo here. I'll give him an offer. That's a lot of money, though. It Maybe I, if I can give him a two-year deal and up the money, I'll be okay with this. Will he accept this? He has. All right. A two-year deal. We now actually have a competent coach that's not ass. Hitting coach, minus three contact sucks. <laughs> Plus three bunting. Are you fucking kidding me? We'll keep it. The pitching coach is okay. First base coach might have to go. Second base coach might have to go. Farm director, I'm also cool with that. First base coach definitely has to get fired. We need... Oh! This guy's an absolute stud at first base coach. We will definitely get... I will even give this guy a four-year contract. Perfect. Now we got a... There's actually some good first... Some good uh, coaches here. So I'm also going to fire our third base coach just because of that minus three stealing. 
and he only has one year left on his contract so i'm fine with him going and anthony with another plus two speed please come to the team all right we've also completely revamped the coaching here staff in chicago so now everyone will actually have positive boosts and won't be affected too badly so here's the batting order that i have come up with versus right-handing pitching it's a lot better than left-handing pitching. I'll tell you that. Versus right-handing pitcher, we're going to have Dominique Fletcher, our right fielder, being leadoff hitter. That's 73 speed and 72 contact is why he's going to be there. Colson Montgomery, I'm just going to make him second base, honestly. I know he's a shortstop, but just looking at him compared to Nicky Lopez, at least batting-wise, he's a lot better. Contact, it's similar, but he's just so much better with power. Nicky Lopez is a better fielder than Colson is, but... 29 and C just doesn't really do it for me. So Nicky Lopez will kind of just be our backup rotational second baseman and shortstop. Ole Jimenez, left fielder. He is DH, really bad at fielding, but he's actually got some really good hitting stats. So he'll be a good three spot for us. Luis Robert Jr. will be batting cleanup. Andrew Vaughn batting five. Again, low speed, but he's actually got some pretty good batting stats 67 contact 60 power 72 clutch yon mokado isn't terrible as well then we also got andrew benatendi here batting at seventh decent speed good contact just bad power and then paul de young batting ninth because he at least has decent power and then the catcher max sassi just ass now, in terms of batting order, we got left, left, but then right, 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 switch, left, right, right, and then left, left. So I believe that this should be fine. Left-handed pitching. We don't got good left-handed <laughs> left handing hitting at all. Andrew Benintendi, again, starting. Colson Montgomery at two. Well, Andrew Benintendi actually wasn't starting. He was at uh, seven. I'm moving him to one here because at least he has... He's better at hitting against left than right. Colson Montgomery again at two. Yes, it's bad, but just look at Nicky Lopez's stats. Just actually, maybe I will have Nicky Lopez start against the lefties. I'll actually, I'll do that for now and we'll see how this goes. We will see how this goes. I'll even have him do lead off and then we'll do Ben and Tendi here at second. Sure, why not? Paul DeYoung here, it's not looking the best, honestly. It's it's not looking the best against left-handed. We have to have Gavin Sheet start at left-handing pitcher, uh, left pitchers because of how bad Dominic Fletcher is. Then we got Corey Lee, who will be our backup center. He'll just come in when he can. And same with Mike Moustakis, he'll just come in when we need him. He's actually a decent right-handing uh, batter, so we can use him, use him as a pitch hitter if needed or if we just need to give our other third baseman or first baseman some rest. And this is the team. Hopefully, I've done a decent job explaining this. I've been all over the place. I've had to make so many trades. I know it's not easy just to kind of look at the team. I've been able to, I brought us up to 27th with the moves that I've made. And now we are finally ready to play the Detroit Tigers. I'm going to fully play the game here. And I still don't entirely know what I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to choose to play the entire game. Oh, we're going up against the left-handed hitter right away. Perfect. Fuck yeah, that's what I love to see. I'm just going to show you guys the key things that happen. So if any runs get scored or if we're in a jam, I'll show you that. I still don't entirely know how it's going to happen, but we'll play it by ear. We'll, we'll, I'm going along with this just like you guys are, and we'll see what's going to happen here. Oh, and we're in a rain game to start it off. You love to see that. And that's not good. Very first batter. Jesus Christ. Sir, I'm trying to fix the audio right now. God damn. The crowd is so damn loud. Holy shit. I wanted to have just like a little bit of crowd noise just so that it, it seems a little bit realistic. But holy shit. The crowd is loud as hell. Garrett Crochet, not off to a good start, allowing a hit on his very first batter faced. But I'm going to see if I can turn this around. Ball, 
efficiency. And Garrett Crochet allows two hits but three strikeouts. And now, Nicky Lopez is leading things off against Tarkis. Oh my god. Very first pitch, Nicky Lopez gets on base. <laughs> You know what, Nikki? Maybe, just maybe we got something with you, bud. We'll see. Now Andrew Benintendi here as well. And what a bullshit play made by whoever's the... Who's ever the uh, strong safe Strong safety, Jesus Christ. Whoever's the shortstop for the Detroit Tigers just made an insane play. And in three pitches, we have three hits. And now Luis Robert Jr. here with the runner on first. Come on, buddy. Oh my god, he just smoked that out of the park. Holy shit. <laughs> Luis Robert Jr. with a two-run bomb. 371 feet. Just absolutely smoked this. Very first pitch was a high fastball, and he sent that baby flying. Let me just make sure... All-Star. I think, yeah, that's what I wanted. I got it on All-Star. There's eight difficulties, and All-Star is where I have it set for now. There is Legend and Hall of Fame, but All-Star is what I've been playing on just to test the waters. We can up the difficulty if needed. And holy shit, we might need to up the difficulty. This is just one game, but against the Detroit Tigers' best pitchers, on five pitches, we have five hits. Well, I shouldn't say five hits, but we put the ball in play on every single hit. And Andrew Vaughn gets under it, and that is the end of the first inning here. But we get a two-run bomb to Luis Roberts Jr. And we were swinging on the first pitch. He was throwing us strikes, and we, uh, we came out swinging. White Sox were not afraid to hit the ball here in that first inning. And Garrett Crochet with another strikeout. Dude's already got four strikeouts and five batters faced. And Paul DeYoung blast that. That should be a double. Absolutely hammered that ball. And Paul DeYoung's turning. Will I go three? I will not. Paul, Paul DeYoung will stay at second base. But a leadoff double for the White Sox. And we are... We are getting all over uh, Scumball here. Scooball, I know who he is. He's the best pitcher on the Tigers. I just don't really know how to pronounce his name. I'm really bad at pronouncing names, if you guys haven't learned already. I think I actually am going to send Paul DeYoung here. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if Paul DeYoung can turn on the brakes here. And it's a bad pitch anyways from the Detroit Tigers. And Gavin Sheets was able to advance Paul DeYoung to third base. And now it's up to the catcher, Max Stasi here. The guy who I've been shitting on the most to... Get Paul DeYoung across. Acquired from LA in 2023. Oh, this was the guy they got in the trade. Wow. He's ass. I mean, those have been two really good pitches. Like, they've been on the edge. That was not a good one. Wow. And a foul tip with Max Stasi there. I mean, I swung too late, but... Nick Lopez now is going to have to get a second hit. And did he? Come on, Nick Lopez! Two for two! Bring it on, Paul DeYoung, to go up 3-0. Holy crap. Nicky Lopez. I was shitting on this man, but Nicky Lopez is already two for two. He's got a run and an RBI already. And Andrew Benatendi now up to bat here. And smokes it for, an, for a single. Was all over that slider. Now, Eloy Jimenez back up for the Chicago White Sox. And absolutely obliterated that ball, and that is gone. Huh. Um. Wow. Just turned on that inside fastball, hit it. Did he look like Ice Cube a little bit there? Did he, uh, he looked a little bit like Ice Cube, and holy crap, the Detroit Tigers are already pulling their best pitcher. It's only the second inning, and Luis Robert Jr. is up. 
And Luis Robert Jr., holy crap, all these balls are just getting in the gaps here for the White Sox. And they have come out swinging. These guys are on fire. I fired the head coach. I fired the first base, uh, first base coach and third base coach. And the White Sox could not be happier. They've been coming out swinging. All right, Yoman Cotto with a 1-2 count here. And I was pretty bad there on the sinker. As you can see, I was I was, I was pretty far off. But that could that could be a young ice cube. Look, look at his face right there. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. And now the uh, Chicago White Sox here already have a 6-0 lead in the third inning. Hopefully we don't blow this. Oh my god, Makata. Makata could not make the stop, and the Detroit Tigers get a leadoff single, which they desperately needed if they're going to have any shot here of making the comeback against the White Sox. Oh, shit. Come on, Gavin, get there to third base. Back-to-back -back singles here for the Detroit Tigers. Garrett Crochet needs to be able to get out of this here. That's not good. Uh-oh. Oh, come on, Sheets. Throw it home. Come on, Sheets. Uh-oh. This is not good here. The Detroit Tigers with three straight singles now. Okay, this is a double play ball here, though, for DeYoung. Off to first, and not in time. Riley Green with... Really damn good speed there was able to... Is that 66 or 88? I don't know, actually. But we really need to get another double play ball here from Garrett Crochet. Oh, perfect. Can we do... Inf Can we, like, let it drop? Well, I'll get it. Alright. That's two away now here for the White Sox and Garrett Crochet. Let's just get out this... Get out this uh, next batter here and just... Get out of the inning here, Scott. Or I shouldn't say scot-free, but only allowing one run. Jake Rogers getting weak contact there, not wanting to go down, and oh shit. Another single. Four singles for the Detroit Tigers this inning to give them two runs and kind of put them back into this game now. Come on, Crochet. Let's get out of this inning. It's been a bad inning for him, but oh my god. Come on, we can get him, we can get him, we can get him. Boom! Gavin Sheets with the money shot to tag him out at home plate. Garrett Crochet, though, allowed five singles that inning, which I'm not too stoked about. But we are still up two to six. And let's try to do some more damage here with Andrew Vaughn. And, oh my god, I was all, I swung too early. I swung way too early. I saw a breaking ball right in the middle of the plate and I jumped on it. Oh my god, what a play from the first baseman there. That's two now really good plays from the Detroit Tigers infielders here that have robbed us of two more hits that we potentially could have had. And Paul DeYoung with a little bloop single here in the first base. Another hit for the Chicago White Sox. Also, none of no Chicago White Sox on the projected top 10 fantasy hitters, by the way. Gavin Sheets... Smoking the changeup for another single, and now we got two guys on base here. All right, catcher here. Let's see if he. Oh, that's a double play. That is a double play that our catcher has grounded into there. Now that was a bad pitch to swing on for sure, weak contact, but um, not good that we grounded into a double play here. And now Garrett Crochet has seven, eight, nine. Let's get a one, two, three inning out of here, Garrett, and uh, recover from what happened last inning. Nicky Lopez with a good play, and that's what he's known for, is having a, being a good second baseman, so he at least better be doing that for us. Let's give this dude an off-speed pitch, and we'll call it good. Oh my god, he swung at it. It was terrible, but Garrett, Garrett, Garrett Cheats gets another strikeout. I'm going to try to get one more inning out of Garrett Cheats, but I might need to definitely start warming up someone else, because he was already getting tired there. Holy crap, and Nicky Lopez with his third hit of the day. Nicky Lopez actually 
having a great opening day here. Now Andrew Benatendi opening, hoping to get his buddy across. And, oh my god, it went through! Go to third! Andrew Benintendi getting it done, and the top of the lineup here for the Chicago White Sox has gone single-single. Got runners on the corner for Eloy Rim uh, Jimenez, and let's see what we can do here. And we chase the slider. Not good in our parts. But we also need to get someone warming up in the bullpen here. Um... I thought Kepko was a 63 overall. Maybe not. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, Crochet is already a left-handed pitcher, so let's send out... I, I swear everyone's one overall less right now than what they were. Yeah, because Chavez Chavez was a 76. So for some reason, all of our pitchers are one overall lower, maybe because it's raining. I don't know. Um, we will send out... We send out Steven or John? We'll send out... We'll send. We'll warm up John here. I'm going to chase another slider like a dumbass. That can be another double play ball. But at least he got the runner across and we scored another run. RBI double play there. See, now, now that I went up 6-0... I'm starting to swing at a lot worse pitches, which I can't do. And with a hard bit, hard hit ground ball for Luis Robert here, grounded out to second base. But we did score a run that inning to go up five again, and this will be the last inning for Garrett Crochet. Hopefully, he can go one, two, three here. But as you can see, his stamina is pretty low. Doesn't have that high of stamina for a starting pitcher, but alas, we digress here, and that's not good. Do I need to pull Garrett Crochet? We'll see how he handles this second batter. Oh, fuck. Come on, get there, Benintendi. Haul ass! Alright, Andrew Benintendi was able to make the play. And one out, runner on first. Garrett Crochet can still stay in here for Riley Green. Oh, come on. Double play ball, baby. One. Ooh, and Garrett Crochet gets out of the inning. Five innings pitched for Garrett Crochet. Only two runs allowed. I think that's a pretty solid day. Five innings pitched, two runs. Can't complain too much there. And a weak ground ball from Yana there. My PI was pretty bad on that. That sinking action fooled me a little bit. And Andrew Vaughn now, 0 for 2. Let's see if he can change that here in the 5th inning. And he can't. Man, that sinker's got some, some good action that I'm missing there. It's going a little bit more left than I have intended. Paul DeYoung, though. He's 2 for 2. And Paul DeYoung gets someone on base this inning. No. A quick 1-2-3 here for the White Sox in the 5th. We're sending in John. Oh. Uh. Very first batter that John faces, he allows a home run to carry Carpenter. Um. You know what? That was the cleanup hitter. Maybe that was just a fluke. We're still able to get out of the inning. We did go 1-2-3 after we allowed the home run to Kerry Carpenter. Not our finest moment there in Chicago, but it's only one run. And now we only have to survive three more innings. Get down. Yes! Gavin Sheets with a leadoff single in the sixth inning here for the Chicago White Sox. And now my favorite player, Max Stasi. Let's see if he can get a hit this game. Almost did. He almost was able to pull it down that third base side here. Oh my gosh, he did get a single. I shouldn't have swung at that, but... You know what? When you're hot, you're hot. And, uh... Max Stassi there. It, being able to get the job done first. And now Nicky Lopez, who's 3 for 3 on the day. 
is about to be four for four, baby. Come on, get down, bitch. Yeah, Nikki Lopez, four for four with an RBI single. Holy crap, he's going to be the player of the game for me. Nikki Lopez playing lights out. And Andrew Benatendi smoking. That, no, that's gone. Go, 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 go. Haul ass. Uh, we'll, we'll just stick Benatendi at third here. In a two-RBI two double for Andrew Benatendi. And uh, the Chicago White Sox are continuing to cook with gas here in the sixth inning. Oh my god, I smoked that bitch. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh my god. He, Eloy with his second home run. Perfect the high fastball. Just absolutely smoked the crap out of that. And uh, the Detroit Tigers here are not having a good opening day. And the Chicago White Sox have 12 runs. The sad thing about this, White Sox fans, is I'm pretty sure I have more runs right now in my first game playing as the White Sox and the White Sox do in three games in real life. They got none against the Tigers on opening day. Then I believe they got five on day two and then two on day three. Is that going to be caught? It is. But so in real life, in three games, the Chicago White Sox have seven total runs, and I have 12 in six inning of plays here in fantasy land. And holy shit, that got down. I thought that was going to get caught, but the center fielder just didn't give a shit, I guess, for the uh, Detroit Tigers there. And Andrew Vaughn, 0 for 3. This is, I think he's the only guy on the team that doesn't have a hit. Come on, Vaughn. Let, let's, he's the only guy on the team who doesn't have a hit, I believe. That would be pretty embarrassing for everyone to get a hit on opening day, but you. Come on, Vaughn. You got this. Come on. Oh, I needed to get up more on that. Is that going to drop? Holy shit, that almost did. That was my fault there. I could have easily smoked that. I didn't get, it up. Didn't get up on that. Oh my god, we got saved. This um just isn't calling inside stuff. Come on, Vaughn. Smoke that shit. Oh... Not good. And because there's 162 fucking games in the series, right? I'm up by nine with three innings left. I'm just going to sim out the rest of the game. I know that might be lame, but I think I am going to give myself some mercy rule simmings here. If I'm up by nine with three innings. So we'll just simulate the rest of the game. We'll see what happens. And nothing happens in the seventh. Nothing happens in the eighth. And we have won 12 to 3 here. Our starting pitching was able to uh, get us out of the next three innings. And the Chicago White Sox win opening day 12 to 3. Eloy Jimenez was the player of the game. Two for two for four, two home runs, five RBIs. Nicky Lopez went four for five, two RBIs and four runs. If you look at the if you, if you look at the Chicago White Sox here. Nicky Lopez, 4 for 5. Andrew Benatendi, 3 for 5. Eloy, 2 for 4. Luis Roberts, 2 for 5. Yon, 2 for 4. Andrew Vaughn, though, 0 oh for 4. That's disappointing. Everyone on the team got a hit but Andrew Vaughn. That's really got to suck for him. I'd feel pretty upset. Garrett Crochet gets the win. Good for you, Garrett Crochet. Only allowed two runs in five innings. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, we get a day of rest. And now we get to go on to game two, where Mason Miller, who we traded for with the Angels, or not the Angels, with the Oakland Athletics, is going to be getting the start here for us. And now we are going up against a left-handed pitcher. What's this king? Wait, how the fuck is Nicky Lopez minus one overall? I don't know what this king symbol means. Does that mean that they just played out of their ass? I know the star means they're a star player. The arrows means that they're an up-and-coming prospect. I, I don't even know what the king symbol means. But alas, we got the king single symbol on Ice Cube. I might just call him Ice Cube because that's easier to say than Eloy for me because I'm stupid. But Mason Miller here. 
the newest starting pitcher for the Chicago White Sox. Getting his first pitch and... Um, hmm. First pitch is a Chicago White Sox. Goes probably exactly how you would expect it to go if you're a Chicago White Sox fan. 96 to 100. This dude's got an absolute arm on him. He threw a 99 mile per hour fastball that Giro just could not locate. Now we're going to hit him with a slider. Oh, shit. That was very bad placement by me. Do not get me wrong. That was some ass placement. And Mason Miller here. Two singles allowed in the first inning. Oh, shit. Come on, Luis. Come on, Luis. Track that bitch. Oh, fuck yes. Luis Roberts bailing us out, being able to track that ball. But now there's runners on the corner with only one out. And Kerry Carpenter, probably the Tigers' best pit hitter, is up to bat. 1-2 count. I'm going to give him the high heat. Give him the high heat. And a strike on the corner. Fuck yes. That's what I'm talking about. All right, come on, Mason. Let's get out of this jam. Swing and a miss on Colt Keith. Hit him with this this high heat. Foul it off, but it's an 0-2 count already for for Colt Mil for uh, Colt Keith. I'm gonna hit him with the off speed change up here. Oh shit! Come on, Montgomery, make a play. Boom. We get out of the inning. We had runners on first and second with no outs, and Mason Miller was able to navigate. And now, here we are. Back to the White Sox. Dominic Fletcher, his first at bat, and he smokes a fastball. Holy shit, is this a triple opportunity? No, just a double, just a double. Dominic Fletcher with an absolute piss missile into right field for a double on the very first pitch of the game. Now, Colson Montgomery, his first at bat. As a Chicago White Sox, just a weak fly ball, shit contact. And I probably could have sent him there, but I didn't really feel like him. It's okay, Colson. You you got you tried your hardest. Now Ice Cube's up to bat here. Two home runs on opening day. Let's see if he can uh, get some more here for Chicago. Not with that slider. Only 80 miles per hour. That might be difficult for me to hit. Oh my god, I just smoked that bitch. That gone? Holy fuck it is. Ice Cube. Three home runs on six at bats. Damn, dude. Okay. I, I, I was so pumped up about that two run shot that I was just swinging at a bunch of shit outside of the field there and was not paying attention. Not a good couple of at bats after the two run bomb by Ice Cube by CM Freeze. But now we're back on defense, and Mason Miller gets a easy ground ball there that Colton Montgomery is able to take care of. Ooh. That was on the edge that could have been called a, a strike, but he missed out there. And Vaughn, I'm just going to have him run himself. Thank you, good sir. This guy can't hit him right now. Andy just has no clue what to do. And let's hit him with the off-speed pitch right down the center of the field for a strikeout looking. This dude was lost. He could not hit a single ball off Mason. And now, bottom of the second here for the White Sox. Let's see if we can uh, add on to our lead here. And I smoked that over the third baseman's head. Is this going to be a double? All ass, Yon. Come on. Let's go. All ass. Get down. Get down. Get down. And a leadoff double. Back-to-back -back leadoff doubles, doubles for the Chicago White Sox here. And Andrew Benintendi went 3-for-5 last game. He's up for bat. He's looking to add on to the White Sox lead here. Oh my god, I might have just smoked that out of the park. Shit, he actually caught up to that. Andrew Benintendi getting screwed there. That was a perfect two. I thought that was gone. 103 miles per hour off the bat. Show me the replay. Andrew Benintendi smokes the ball. How far did he have to go? Oh. So close for Andrew. So close. At least he was able to move the runner over to third base. Can't complain too much about that. And now Max Dosti just needs to make a decent contract here. 44 speed is a little bit worrisome. 
so it actually needs to be somewhat deep into the outfield but i could e i could strike out too and not it might not even fucking matter or flip it matter i should say with the flip oh my god i just swung at a pitch i should have not swung on these these low velocity sliders are screwing me up right now come on baby Okay, that's going to score a run. He might even get across that slow fuck. And he does. Max Stassi with an infield single. The third baseman from the Detroit Tigers was not able to properly field that. And Max gets an RBI single. And Paul DeYoung now is up to bat. And probably shouldn't have swung at that. But you can't, you can't change the past. Oh, it doesn't matter though. He's going to slice that for a double. And okay, this is actually starting. This is actually too easy, and um, it's pretty, pretty bad. I might actually have to just increase the hitting difficulty. Or like I said, the Detroit Tigers could just have really bad pitching. But I thought the Detroit Tigers had good pitching. So I won't immediately change. This could just be a fluke. We could just be on a hot streak right now, but we'll see how it goes. And he. Second baseman for the Tigers was not able to turn around and make that jump throw that you typically can see. And now we're up 0-4 to four and Colson Montgomery here get another chance. And he smoked that bitch. Damn. But he was the... Colson Montgomery at least is able to get his first RBI here in the show. He was able to bring across the third baseman there. And even though he smoked it, just went right to an outfielder. An ice cube. With the slider, was not able to hit a home run, actually, and actually got out. But the Chicago White Sox have now added another three runs in the second inning to go up 0-5. to five. I'm going to hit him with a little off-speed pitch here. Oh, shit. Well. They were able to get a hit there. Let's let's put these guys to rest. Let's just, let's just have this be a little two-out single and nothing more. Oh, yeah. 96 mile per hour cutter inside the hands. Just a... Oh, my God. Just a brutal pitch for Riley. Riley can't fucking hit this. Oh. Um... Yikes. The third time was not the charm there. And, uh... Riley made Mason Miller pay for trying to throw him the same pitch three times in a row. So a little off speed here. Get out of the inning. There we go. Okay. Another strikeout for Mason. Uh, we did allow a two-run bomb there in the third. Not our brightest moment. But alas, we're still up here by three going into the third now. And Luis Robert Jr. is up and he is hungry for a hit. And he gets it off the very first pitch. The Chicago White Sox have been getting a lot of ground balls that have just gone where the defenders have not been, and I'm all here for it. Does Luis Roberts have stealing speed? He does. 61. Oh. I didn't even lead off. They were already nervous about his speed. I am going to try to get him to go, though. And come on, baby. Get down, Luis. Oh, I think he might have gotten caught. Fuck, he did. He threw a high fastball. Literally, he's been... He threw a 94 mile per hour fastball high. The worst possible pitch. Just really unlucky there for us. And then we sky it with Yon, and uh, that's the inning. Not the response that we want to have after allowing a two run bomb. Yeah, that's right. That's what you get for not swinging, Spencer. Pussy. You're going to call that on strikes looking. Come, dude, they aren't swinging. I'm throwing strikes right down the middle, and the Detroit Tigers are scared to swing their bats. Uh, that was a little cheese, but I clipped the corner. Come on, don't look at this, bitch. Come on, man. You're just not going to swing? I'll give you an off-speed pitch right down the center. Yeah, he did swing there. Good job. Oh, look at this little pussy-ass shit here. That's going to be a single. Holy fuck, what a play from the third baseman! Yoan! What a fucking play! 
Barehanded just picks that shit up. Barehanded with a fucking cannon arm. Holy shit. I did not know he had that in him. I, I respect him a lot more now. He's going to be getting more third baseman starts with that shit. Did not know he had that in him. Mason Miller might be doing the same exact thing that Garrett Crochet does and gets five innings, two runs allowed. Hopefully I didn't just jinx him there. But Andrew Benintendi's now up in the bottom of the fourth for us. And right to the second baseman. I even had good on that too. I'm surprised I didn't get more air. I got a little bit underneath it, but... Hmm. Back-to-back -back pitches now that I've gotten really good contact on, and my PCI's basically been on the ball, but just gone right to somebody. Oh, yeah. And another strikeout for Mason Miller. I think that's like his fi fifth strikeout looking. I know it says he had seven strikeouts, but I think that's his fifth one looking. Mason Miller is just a strikeout machine. And outside of that two-run bomb, he's been having a really good game. Come on, Fletcher. All right. Fletcher's easily going to get there. And Mason Miller, he'll do literally the same exact thing that Garrett Crochet did, where in five innings, he will allow two runs, and that'll pull him. And who are we going to put in here? We're going to do a left-handed pitcher. We are. I'll put in a... I'll put in a Genesis, Genesis Cabrera. Who pitched last game? Did Steven Wilson, he went three innings? Did we have a closer go in? Or did he literally just pitch the rest of the game? He did. Steven Wilson just straight up pitched the rest of the game for us. Holy shit. Good for him. And he didn't allow a single run. Um, You know what? Maybe we'll bring in Rick Hill. Look at those sunglasses, dude. We'll bring in Rick Hill. Those cool-ass shades. We'll see what he can do in the top of the sixth. And that's probably going right to the center fielder there for Dominic. And after having five runs in the first two innings, Chicago White Sox have gone cold. Come on, Colson. Uh, didn't get enough speed. If I was able to get under that just a little bit better, he could have made it through. All right, Ice Cube here. Up to bat. Oh, my God. Just swung at a terrible slider. And after uh, doing really well in the first two innings, I have looked like crap the last three. And now Rich Rick Hill coming in for Mason Miller. Only allowed two runs in five innings. Again, I think that's pretty solid. Two runs in five innings is, I think, a quality start. Come on. Oh, Colton. What a good play from Colton there. Flashing the leather. Showing why, uh, making some defensive plays, showing that he can be a good quality second baseman for us. Now, Kerry Carpenter hit a two-run bomb on us yesterday. So we know that he has home run potential. Okay, and Rick Hill here. Um, this isn't looking good. Finally gets a strike in there. Let's try not to do anything fancy and just... Oh, shit. Go foul! Oh, fuck. He's going to throw him out, Benintendi. Oh, he's too fast. And a double for Kerry Carpenter here in the second inning. Sixth inning. Uh-oh. Get there, Benintendi. Get there, get there, get there, get there! Fuck yes. Good job, Benintendi. All right. Two outs now here in the top of the six. Runner on second. Rick Hill trying to get out Spencer Torkelson. Oh, okay. Montgomery will make another really good play here. And Rick Hill will get out of the inning, even though he allowed a double. But that is all he did. And now, who else do we want to bring in here? We want to go righty now? I think we do. Let's bring in... You know what? Let's bring in Michael Kopech. Let's see what he can do. 62 overall, but I think he's got more to show us here. Luis Robert Jr. going up against Will Vest. Bottom of the six. All right. Luis Robert getting a single there. I was again early, but... 
What are you going to do, man? What are you going to do? And now Andrew Vaughn still looking for his first hit of the season. 0 for 6. And I am so sorry, Andrew, that I fucking swung at that shit. I'm so sorry. Andrew Vaughn 0 for 7. That's all my fault. Um, I'm screwing over Andrew here. Only man on the team without a hit. I'm sorry, Andrew. That was all me, dude. I swung at a dog shit pitch. Wow. Wow. Okay. I need to lock in here. All right. Luis Roberts gets the steal the second time. One for two now. But I wanted to get him at high fastball there. That was just a bad throw by the catcher, honestly. But I don't think he would have caught him. I got a really good jump with Vaughn. That's actually a really deep hit there from Jan. And at the warning track, holy shit, that almost got out. That was a really deep hit, deep hit from Yoan there. I know I just called him Jan. I know it's Yoan. That was basically at the warning track. I felt like his ash just hit the warning track. Did it not? I didn't realize that that could have gone out. Dude was hauling ass. It literally ran into the warning track. That was almost a home run there. And now, Andrew Benintendi 0 for 2. We got a runner on third. Let's see if we can get him across here. I smoked that bitch. Oh, and I smoked it right to the right fielder, though. And unfortunately, we were not able to get Luis Robert Jr. across. You know what? Let, let's let's bring uh, let's bring Kopech in. I, I know I, I said I was. Let's see what he's got here. Let's see what he got. He's, he's going up against 7, 8, 9 for the Detroit Tigers. But I got lucky. And now a little curveball here. Fuck. Okay, Kopech. But, I mean, that curveball was also right down the heart of the plate. I knew it the second I threw it. Fuck. Okay, we're going up against their number 9 hitter. Okay, we'll at least get it out here. No way he's going to try to go to third, right? Oh my god, he is. Come on, Fletcher. Tag that bitch out. What a moron. What a moron, dude. That was way Detroit Tigers AI ass. And Kopech now. I can keep him in. Now he's got two outs and only a runner on third after that blunder by the uh, Detroit Tigers there. He's already got an 0-2 count here. Let's hit him with the low curveball and see if he swings. He just won't swing and I'll throw a strike and strike him out. Detroit Tigers AI actively throwing. Now, this is the, like, bad thing about the Chicago's White Sox team. I mean, there's a lot of bad things. But I don't have, like, a relief pitcher that I can depend upon yet. Like, I don't have a guy who's, like, I have a 70, what, 5 overalls, the highest guy I got, and everyone else is, like, 70 or less. So, if I'm going to jam, I don't have, like, this go-to guy that I'm like, okay, I really fucking trust this guy to get me out of this situation. I got to trust all these 70 overalls, and just the more I play the game... Or the series, I'll learn who those guys are. Great play there by Colton. He's really been uh, doing really good at second base today. At least defensively. Riley Green with the two-run bomb in the third inning. And he won't hit one here. And another easy ground out. Joe Barlow, though, is someone who I'm hoping can become one of those guys for us that I can just trust to get us out of situations. So far, he's looking like he's playing the part. Fuck. Oh, can Luis Roberts get to this? Well, he can. He can. Luis Roberts, absolutely insane center fielder for us. And now we are going to have our closing pitcher, Jesse Chavez, warm up for the ninth inning. For Colton Montgomery, 0 for 2. He did have that RBI pop fly. Ugh. Olsen almost was able to get his first hit. 0 for 3 on the day, but with an RBI pop fly at least. That's two hits, though. If I just got under that just a little bit more, he could have had it. Fuck. I I just missed that fastball. That was bad. That was bad by me. But Luis Roberts Jr. here. Let's see if we can get him another hit for us. Already's got two hits on the day out of our nine hits that we have. And... Nope. Was not able to beat the tag there. 1-2-3 inning again for us in the 8th. We have not scored since the 2nd. But alas, 
we have still been able to get a hold of the Tigers. And now Jesse Chavez, first save situation of the year for him. He's got a three-run lead against the Detroit Tigers. You better not blow this shit or else he's getting cut. Does Jesse seriously not have a fucking fastball? See, I don't get how in... I don't get how you just don't have a fastball. For the last two outs already, Detroit Tigers are down to their last out here. Oh, shit. Well, the Detroit, Ligers, Detroit Tigers hopes stay alive with a two-out single here in the top of the ninth. Oh, my God. No way. Is he going to try to go home? Holy shit, he is. And he was able to get home, too. Uh, Jesse Chavez here, allowing a single and then a double. Okay, we're now on the nine-hole hitter. Let's not, let's not, let's stop fucking around here and get him out. He's down 0-2. Okay, just go tag first. Okay, and a little bit of a scare there, but we were able to get out of the ninth inning. We did allow a run, but we had three to give up. Mason Miller, player of the game, really. I guess we didn't have anyone that was deserving of player of the game. And now for the Chicago White Sox here, Holt Montgomery 0 for 3. At least he had that RBI, that uh, sack, sack fly. Andrew Vaughn 0 for 7 to start the year. Not good. Andrew Benintendi also had an 0 and 3 game. But we had six guys with hits. Andrew Vaughn and Colson Montgomery are two young guys. You'd like to hopefully see more out of them in the future. But I believe that we can get that. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm in the first episode of Chicago White Sox. Anyways, guys, that's where I'm in the first episode of Chicago White Sox franchise. Please leave comments down below on how I can tweak the series to make this better. I'm going to try to make it the best I can. This is going to be an ongoing thing. But leave comments down below on how I can improve, what you like, what you don't like. And as always, guys, peace.